I first met Beyonce in, in a, a show in Jamaica. Oh. She was just, the, like, had one single Destiny Child, and they came for a show when I had, like, probably two or three singles in Jamaica being, like, a young artist, Baby Girl, mm -hmm. and I Get No Bly. I didn't even have the port in me at none of okay. those times. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. We in, we in Houston, so I, I gotta ask you about Baby Boy for sure, because <laughs> listen, man, this yeah. is Beyonce's home right True. here, and y'all killed that song. Baby Boy, you stay on my mind, I think I, I got into an argument with somebody else. I'm not gonna say his name, but he be with you all the time. And you know, I'm just saying. You know I'm, saying? I'm just saying. You know what I mean? I think I know who you're talking. About. Yeah, but I'm just saying. You know, this here. You know, y'all art is what yeah. made that song. <laughs> Not the politics around and none of that. No. You two are dope people, and the art for me. The song was dope. I'm a big Beyonce fan. Me bro. too. So at dope. the end of the day, that art killed it. And you got to give me something on that. Just yeah. how you guys came oh, together with that and all that. You know. I first met Beyonce in in a, a show in Jamaica. Oh. She was just, the, like, had one single Destiny Child, and they came for a show when I had, like, probably two or three singles in Jamaica being, like, a young artist, baby girl, mm -hmm. and not getting a bly. I didn't even have the port in me at none of okay. those times. So, and I was doing dub plays and stuff, but the promoter of that, that, that um, stage show, he was basically trying to be a party promoter, also manage artists. So he managed a young girl that used to sing with us in the, in our group, and he also um, was just trying to you know bring together stuff like that. So at the time, Destiny's Child was very brand new; it was, they didn't cost a lot. Very new. And he he brought them down to Jamaica, and um, that's where I met her first. Um, I didn't have any contact with her or nothing like that after that. So, but I followed their career and loved their music. And um, so this is after they had met Wycliffe. I just argued with another guy on here. Yeah, and, and, this is and, just after they did just that after first that. song. Yeah. yeah. So I think Bugaboo was a song or something like that. And then, um, then they had a change in the group where the, you know Michelle came in and the other two kind That's of right. sat out. And and then all of a sudden, you know, they did some work. Some very big work. MTV was playing them everywhere in 1998, whatnot. But then, you know, I get a call. Yo, um, Beyonce wants to do a song with you. I'm like, for sure. I, I, at that time, I thought that, um, you know, most foreign people would want me to go on a hip hop sounding rhythm. But when she sent the rhythm to me, I was, I was shocked because that's the first time I'd seen somebody say, hey. You know, do do so. You know, you, you remember Mad Lion? Yeah, yeah. You remember Shaggy? Yeah. Um, Maxi Priest and Shaba and all of those were dance or reggae hybrid songs in terms of it wasn't straight reggae, it wasn't straight dance hall. It was kind of mixed with R and B and hip hop. Johnny Gill and Shaba, yeah, yeah. KRS One and Shaba. And that's what they had to do at that time. And so I was of the opinion that everybody that would come from abroad that wanted a song wanted me on a on a hip hop track or R&B track. So when she sent me this dance hall track, I was shocked because I was like, blow up. That means say, we blowing up. Right. Because she hearing it, she feeling it here in Houston. Mm -hmm. She must feel it, she must feel because she's a huge artist at this point. And I was like, this is dope. So went outside uh, in my car, writing the song, and a mango fall straight from the tree. I fall through the, through the, through the, the window and fall in my lap. I swear, a nice sweet mango. And I was like, this song, this song gonna be a hit. <laughs> I got a gift. That's um, crazy. And I'm like, yeah. So um, basically, I did a verse and I sent it to her. And then she was like, all right, well, come to Miami and let's do the song. And went to Miami, went to a legendary studio called Marlin Studio, which no longer exists now. I think Chris Blackwell, who used to manage Bob mm -hmm, Marley, mm -hmm. that was his studio on South Beach. I'd never been there. Um, I'd never worked with Scotch Tours before. Never had. Didn't know him. She uh, she comes in, she's like, yo, have you ever worked with Scott before? 
I'm like, nah. She's like, he's crazy. Watch him. And he's, I, I've always been amazed at this dude's talent. He's come to Jamaica many times, worked with my management team from before. They were helping him out in a studio he was at in the country. So they knew him, but I didn't meet him before. And this dude, he's playing keyboards with one hand. He's playing a whole drum sequence with his other hand. Mm -hmm. And he's humming something at the same time. So he's like, you know, um, and he's playing that live. He's not programming it. And he's humming at the same time. And when I saw that, I was like, I'm in a different league here. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this guy, this guy got it going. He know what he's doing. He's playing the keys back way like, you know how he does. And um, that impressed me. So, so both her talent and what she brought to the table, because she wrote verses over and over. When I first heard the song, Baby Boy was a hook, but she had different verses. Wow. Okay. And then when she heard my first verse, she was like, she went back, back in. And, did it. <laughs> and then I went and did the next little part up there in Miami. And But what made me go hard with the intro and everything and that second part was what I heard her doing and what I heard Scott doing. Yeah, okay. yeah. As well. Because I was like, I have to step up to it this. It seems mm -hmm. like the song climbs too. Like that. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's the reason for it because it was built upon. You know, it wasn't okay. just something that was a vibe and we laid it down right there. Because there's, big, there's big songs like that. Like, uh, give me the lights like that. It's oh, just man. one time. One time. Right? Yeah, yeah. But with, with, with this song with her, and, and it was, I believe my first, uh, if Get Busy was my first, this was my first. Those were, it, uh, it's a blurred in my mind. I can't remember mm -hmm. if it was her song first or, or Get Busy. But it was the same timing, man. And when that was happening, I'm, you know, you know, you know that emoji on, on your... Oh, <laughs> man. Like, because, again, you said you're a fan. I'm a fan, too. And I was a fan from the first time I saw her. Scene. Yeah. And, um, you know, ju just being around such talented people at the time just brought the best out of me. So I thank them for that. Because it's the pressure, you know, that brings the diamond. You either crumble on it, under it, or you get stronger. And, right. And so... You got stronger. Yeah, and it would, her, to see her focus in the studio, how much time she changed the verse, um, how she kept going back in, and she you was like, I'm me. going to New York, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish it. I'm just going to do more. I'm yeah. Like, God damn. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't do songs like that, you know what I mean? But she taught me songs can not only just be a, like a quick vibe, but also a build. And, and with his talent in there too, it made me go harder. Wow! But it man. can drive Thank you crazy you. though, to me, because if you're trying to search or reach for perfection, because that's yeah. what it seems like. You could she probably was, never get there. Yeah. Yeah. But there's times like that too where you're just doing too much. Exactly. And, and that usually makes the you know you're overthinking. You know, you know when you're cooking soup, you put too much salt, and it, you know you learn. So I think that with with um, with more professional people who do it, do it all the time. Yeah, you go back in, but there's a certain point where you know, oh, that's it, or it's gonna start tasting too salty. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk.